This is the greatest hits to celebrate the first 10 years of your solo <laughs> career, which suggests there may be more. Oh, yeah. Well, too late to stop now, Chris. <laughs> too late to stop now. I can't do anything else. 10 years away. It's, um, it's flown by. How's it, how's it been reflecting on uh, your sort of your debutante decade mm. as a solo artist? You know, it, has been, it has been a little bit reflective. That wasn't I wasn't planning on that. But when I put it together and I had to check the vinyl and I had to listen to it with all objectivity, uh, I got back from Glastonbury uh, and then late that night, uh, I remembered that I was supposed to come up with the uh, all the... All, all the stuff for the for the best of by the Monday, so I had to stay up late and go through it all and listen to it. And I kind of listened to it with a certain amount of objectivity. So I ended up texting the band in the middle of the night, just saying, "Congratulations, boys!" You know, because it's kind of it's a banger, you know. Uh, so that was a pretty nice thing. Uh, I think I can listen to it and go. I used to have when I was a kid. I liked I had the, the best of Blondie. And what was the other one that I had? Oh, oh, Changes One Bowie. And even though I had the other albums, I, I did like those Best Of albums. You know what yeah. I mean? They were, they were good. They were they were valid. Well, when I was a kid, I thought Best Of albums were albums. I didn't realise that there were other kinds of albums as well. You know, <laughs> right. it's really little. Yeah. You know. So And so if, if people have the same experience with, with my Best Of, that they don't know the other stuff and maybe they'll come to it. But if they think it's a good listen, then... I'm all right with that. You yeah, know. of course you're all right with that. Well, it is a good listen. It's a great listen. Irish Times, um, two new tracks somewhere and the answer will play somewhere in a bit. We'll play a bit of it because I want to talk to you more. We can play it when you're not here. We can't talk to you when you're not here because that wouldn't work, would it? Uh, <laughs> tested the influence of Mars, stint supporting the Killers on tour last year. How was that? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, high energy. The thing with the Killers is that uh, their first song s- starts out like everyone else's encore. And that, and, <laughs> so true. And then they just go up yeah, from right, there, right? They start at a million miles an hour Honestly. and get quicker from there. So I was playing, and then I came on with them every night and did a couple of numbers with them. So by the time I, I came on, it was like being strapped to a rocket. It was yeah. a, a, That was every night for about 30-odd shows. So it was good, good being around those guys. And that kind of energy went into my, a couple of my new songs, definitely that kind of arena energy. It's quite quite infectious and it's good for you. It's good. Yeah, and it's like it's very mo- it's 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 not moving as emotionally, but it's it's there's a lot of movement in it, isn't it? It's very stirring, I yeah. think. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. C- clever fellas. List forever in celebration of Johnny's sixtieth birthday. Generous money is giving us uh, the fans the gifts that we want. Firstly, the splendid coffee table book, Mars guitars, and last week the announcement of a 2024 tour in support of Spirit Power, which is great. How is it being sixty, Mister Mar? Uh, well, yeah, I, I'm going to lean into it. I think. I think it's great. I'm not 60 yet, yeah. but I I'm, I'm. You're going to get. You're going to get into 57. it. 57. I'm counting down. I'm. I'm, I'm I'll see you lean, there. I, I, the truth of it is, right. So when I when I hit 59 last year, I was like, what? Uh, how is this happening? And so I've had I've had a year of sort of preparing for it, and now I'm sort of like, get over it. You know what I mean? Get get your yoga on, get your running on. You know what I mean? Like at the age of eighty one, just announcing a new world tour. You got the Stones with the brand new album, cumulative age of like a thousand and six or something. We've we we're still in in context. We're still young bucks. Do you know what? As well, you can there's certain kind of clothes you can wear when you when you're an older (laughs) person, right? Of the fart. No, I mean now there's a certain thing you can get you can get on. You know what I mean? And um, you, you you don't have to try too hard. I don't think. Well, so, yeah. he said, you know, you don't have to try to. It's like learning to play the guitar and being like, you know, you are. It, it comes m- difficult. Things come more easily. They're still difficult, but they come more easily. Yeah, I think that you, you, in a way, maybe what you're talking about is being a little less antsy. You know what I mean? Just like a little bit more kind of oh, come day, go day out. You know, the, yeah. the, you know, the. The, the Chinese have a word for it, which is Wu Wei, which comes from Taoism, yeah. which is kind of just kind of go with the flow a little he's bit. He's not forcing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Alan Watts. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's that's, the man for Wu Wei, right. isn't he? Wu Wei, yeah, it's a thing, yeah. Yeah, in, out, deep, slow, calm, ease, smile, let go. It, Boom. It's, see? <laughs> that's where we are, isn't it? That is where we You're are. You're talking yeah. about clothes. It all started with clothes for you, didn't it? Didn't you come down to London, buy clothes and go and sell them back up in Manchester again? I, that's what I did for that very, the first guitar in that book. That's how I made the money for that guitar. Yeah. There was, uh, yeah, me and my then girlfriend, who's now my wife, we used to make a pilgrimage down to King's Road every week or every second week without fail. And um, we used to just get a 
a bit uh, a wish list from my mates in Manchester and we used to come down and pick them up and we charmed charmed the shops on the King's Road to give them us for cost price and then we went back to Manchester and sold them to our mates. I used to shop in Affleck Palace. Yeah. That was a still great going. place. Oh my gosh. Is it still going? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. We... Affleck Palace was this vintage, is this vintage clothes emporium, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. yeah. There used to be um, Kensington Market down when I, when I were a lad. Yeah, I remember that as well. Well, there was a thing that back in the Smith days, there was um, sometimes if, if people, if they, if they dress up, I mean, I'd say this because I saw this the other day for Halloween. Uh, this girl was dressed up like, like me. And uh, they always wear the the black polar neck with the, the I used to wear this diamante necklace yeah. over my polar neck thing. Yeah, I used to get all of that stuff from Kensington Market. It was great. Johnny, I love this book. Thank you. I love the album, but I adore the book. I really genuinely adore it. Honestly, yeah. I talking about it before to you off the yeah. air. I showed you my goosebumps. Yeah, it reminds me of some of my favorite car books, some of my favorite books uh, about art. You know that the, the photography of these guitars is wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. And we were talking about sometimes form over function is not great. Um, sometimes they say function follows form. It can be the other way around. But if you have both in equal measure and you have your your cup overfloweth with this platinum and this gold, then you get magic and then you get alchemy. And these guitars in this book are things of absolute beauty. We'll get onto that in a second or two. Yeah. But first of all, it started with a toy guitar, didn't it? Yeah, a little wooden thing when I was five from a shop called Emily's that sold brooms and buckets in Ardwick Green in Manchester. Yeah, I was obsessed with the, with this guitar that was in the window. And my parents, well, um, they were like, he's, he's, he's nuts about this guitar, you know, <laughs> I don't know why. Come, we've got to get him this guitar. So I got that when I was five. I used to carry that one around. Like, I used to carry it around like my mates used to carry around toy cars. Yeah, or little tennis records or little kiddie golf clubs. Or footballs and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I used to take it with me. Your yeah. first proper guitar was an acoustic guitar when you were eight. That's right, yeah. Tell us about that. Well, um, because I was serious about playing, my dad took me down, down into town um, well, and... Um, I got this acoustic one that I could actually tune up. And by then, it sounds bananas, but it surprises me, even me with this. I used to read books about guitars and stuff. And even the word, the word chords, you know, a guitar yeah. chord. I used to think, what a, what a beautiful word it that is. It is a beautiful word. It's a, such a good word. And uh, so all the ephemera about guitars I was ready for before my dad even bought me that acoustic one. Because I remember that all came, you know, what, what a pick guard was. I mean, sure... People get a little bit this way about whatever, cars, skateboards, motorbikes. Yeah. But I was all in with every little aspect of the culture because back then, we're talking in 1971, 72, it was completely different than now because now every family, every household has either had a guitar in it or knows someone who has had a guitar. Your yeah. neighbour's got one or your nephew's got one. But back then they were really quite elusive. They were difficult objects to to find for working class people. And someone reminded me the other day that, um, I must've said it in my, my other book, but uh, that I, I knew of every guitar that was within a 10 mile radius, 15 mile radius in South Manchester. I knew the name of the person who had that guitar. This one guy was called Keith Stringer, another guy was called Jimmy Anderson. I remember the names now, right? Yeah, yeah. And they were usually older boys, they weren't my mates, but I just made it my business to know where those yeah. guitars were. I've always been like, you know, this I, you know, those like old women who like hoard cats. <laughs> like, no hoard one, cats and hoard cats. No one's gonna love you like I love you. Yeah, yeah. So that sort of stuck with me to this day, really. Mate, just hearing you talk so affectionately and fondly <laughs> about these guitars, you're so right. And it's in the book, the story about you going to see, you know, bands playing at weddings because they've got guitars and you can get close to a guitar. And there was acoustic guitars, which were few and far between, but then an electric guitar. I mean, come on. And then an amplifier that goes with the guitar. Yeah, and, yeah. The, you know, you buy your first electric guitar and they do say, don't they, that Alan Watts says this as well in one of his uh, stories. He says, you know, if, if you want to be rich because you want to inhabit a certain world, imagine you are and inhabit that world anyway. And you did that with guitars because you couldn't afford a guitar. So you went to work in a guitar shop that had the kind of guitars you wanted to be near in it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. You just inhabit that world, really. I was 11 when I started in that shop, uh, which is nuts. The, um, because they couldn't legally afford to pay me, the manager, his name was Duncan. I always remember him. He... Um, 
he, he, I used to go and get his cigarettes. He knew I wasn't going to leave. I was going to be hanging around that shop for five hours minimum, right, every Saturday. Yeah. So he, he was kind of amused by me, and I wasn't such a bad kid. So he was just like, all right, go and get me a bacon sandwich. Go and move those boxes. But he didn't pay me. But what he did do was that he, um, I, I realised how this was a bit off. He said, well, I can't pay you, but what I will do for in payment, I'll give you discount on whatever guitar you want to buy in the shop. Now go and get me some cigs. So it's kind of like a win-win. <laughs> win, yeah, win. yeah, yeah. But I wanted to just be Didn't around. Care, man. And back then it was all usually boys who were in those shops. I wanted to be around the older boys and listening to their conversation, why they wanted to play that and, you know. Oh, it's because Mick Ronson plays this one or Richie Blackmore plays that one. I was just all in yeah. completely. It was and it's not a sacrifice if you want to do it. A hundred percent. Footballers are like that. Yeah. You know, you look back, I was talking to Jack Grealish a couple of years ago about this whole thing. We took him out uh, being a teenager, standing in the rain on a Wednesday night. You know, be teenage boys, you know, you're, or girls, you know, you're, your mates maybe going down the pub or going to parties and those sort of things. And you skip all of that. That looking back, other people might consider a sacrifice. And you're missing out. Yeah, but you you just really want to do it. I mean, yeah. when did you start at Piccadilly Radio? Yeah, you well, have, well you would have I been started about sixteen or something. I started before I started because I, when I was listening to it, I I just imagined the whole time I was there anyway. So you you just exactly. There. That's the Alan Watts thing. Yeah, I know. And I was yeah, of course. And then I was a news agent. You know, five o'clock in the morning, up at four, in the shop at five, working till nine or ten, go home and have a kip. Then back for the evening papers, four till seven. Then in the car. Then to Manchester. Then working anywhere, like around the guitars, around the radio station. You know, I used to walk around it before I got to go in it and work for nothing. Yeah, but it didn't matter. I don't. I don't think I slept for like five years. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't sit. But as an adult, a different vantage point. You look back and you go, "Oh, it is actually sacrifice." Because a couple of my pals, well, all my pals, really they were in my, one of my bands whether they liked it or not at some yeah. point right and a few weeks into it or a couple of months into it they stopped turning up to rehearsals uh -huh. I can't be oh, Johnny's a bit full on but they 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 would have seen a sacrifice yeah, I didn't I just saw way. it as like cracking on and getting better you know so yeah, man. I've been very lucky when I even want to think about this stuff I've been I feel very 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 lucky not only to be uh, to have made a living out of it but just to have had the um, had that passion, I think. But for me, reading your book, Thanks, is, yeah. it's, it's the stu you know the fact that you're such a student. You know, you're a connoisseur now. Of course, you are, and you're a master. You're a maestro. You're a guitar hero. But you remain a student all the time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love that. I, learning something. What get? In all honesty, what makes me feel good when I wake up in the morning is is the thought of practicing. Yeah. Seriously, if I can get two hours of practice in, it, it, I guess maybe tennis players are like this or whatever, but it's becoming, I don't know why, but it's becoming even ever more so important to me right now. You know, just the idea of practicing because uh, just just for pleasure yeah, and, and expertise, I have this thing about expertise uh, is something you can get for free. You don't have to be famous for it. You don't have to make money. Anyone out there listening to us talking, it's there for them if they want to be an expert in whatever they're interested in, especially with the internet now. You can go and do it. And when you put your head on the pillow at night, you go, right, I am an absolute expert. <laughs> and no one can take it away from they you. They can't, they can't. The thing about the guitars that you talk about in the book, and from the first guitar on the first page, the Gibson Les Paul, you... you um, they were always older than you. These guitars were older than you. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean by that? So you buy a football, it's brand new from the footy shop, you know, or you buy a pair of boots, they're brand new. But these guitars always had a life before you. That's true. They yeah. were always your seniors, your sages, your wise men and women. And so already there, there was a teacher. You were holding a teacher in your hands. And sometimes you buy a guitar and it has a Smith song in it, you say. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, come on. What, how but, great is all this, Johnny? Yeah, it's amazing. The thing, when I, when I was starting with the book, the very first idea was the impulse for it was that I wanted to make uh, like a coffee table book, as they're known, full of abstract pictures, beautiful abstract pictures, using my guitars as the source material. Um, 
because my mate Pat Graham, who is this genius photographer, he specialises in these really up close macro abstract photographs where he goes in on all the imperfections. So if you if you um, ask Pat to take a photograph of, you, of your guitar, it'll come back. You look at it, you go. Is that like, it looks like a, a sunset in Iceland or yeah. something. He goes, oh no, I went really, really in close on the rust on the back where yeah. you've been sweating. So that was my immediate idea. And then the next thing was a, I had the title Mars Guitars. Well, that's a no brainer. All right, okay. But then. Sounds this, like the shop that has to happen. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> set me Evans. Come but on. The, the, but the next thing that happened was this thing you're talking about with these stories of. Um, I wrote the Smith song on, on that one and I did the Smith song on that and then uh, Nile Rogers gave me this one and Radiohead used these ones. I had, I wasn't on planning on any of that. Right. That that came within the, the process of making the book, which was a real bonus. I went to bed really late one night after doing the shooting of these, of these photographs. It took quite a long time. It was very technical and um, trying to cut out all the reflections, get the light right, get the colours of the guitars exactly authentic, blah, 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 blah. So that was a big undertaking, and I went. I got in home late one night, and um, I was in the car, and I went, "Oh, I mean, that Les Paul didn't Bernard? I'm pretty sure Bernard Sumner used that with New Order for Regret." And I've got quite a good memory, but I rem so I just went back to the time when he recorded that New Order song, and he called me and said, "Oh, you're kids, I used your Les Paul for that." Anyway, all of these these realizations started to come to me as I was doing this photograph book. So right near the end of it. Uh, Noel texted me. Uh, when I say Noel, everyone knows who I'm talking Noel about. Noel Edmonds. It, yeah, it's Edmonds, yeah. yeah. Now, Noel Gallagher calls me. Because <laughs> Noel's like Madonna now. You just say Noel, right? Yeah. But he, um, so he texted me and he said, oh, do you remember this guitar? And um, it was the one that he did Wonderwall on and Don't Look Back in Anger. So uh, he got that guitar from me, so we put that in it. I wasn't expecting any of that stuff when I had this idea for this coffee table book. And the other thing about the coffee table book was that when I was a kid, I grew up in a very working class house and my more, this is in the seventies, my more middle class friends, they had the uh, big book of Mercedes, right? Yeah. And they had Zen book of British gardens or Plat British gardens, right? Architecture books. And I quite liked, it's quite a novelty for me seeing those books. And and they're great. They're, oh, they're, well now we were super used to them, but. The idea of this book was, I thought, well, my dream for it really would be that people who wouldn't ordinarily buy a guitar book, the photos in there are so beautiful and the stories maybe are, are interesting that it can be in, in households of people Forever. who would, wouldn't normally have it. Exactly. That's and that could be it, the guitar it book. It stopped me in my tracks. I was looking forward to reading nice it anyway. Course, yeah. But it's, uh, last night I was like, this is I said to my wife, I said, this book is, she said, what are you reading? I said, this book is unbelievable. Oh, that's great. Honestly, and you talk about Pat, you know, sort of zooming in, or not zooming in, it's more, it's more sort of creative than that, artistic than that. Yeah. But he hones in or he, he discovers, it's like, you know, great, great, like Hockney, he doesn't paint what he sees. He paints the energy behind what he sees, right. which is why his oak trees are pink and not brown and things like that. And what Pat's done, he's photographed the energy, the origin, and the experiences of those guitars. And that's why they look like sunsets, because there is life in everything, because everything has a density to it. And obviously, the denser it is, the more sort of solid it is, but everything is moving, even a rock. And that's what he's got out of these guitars. Oh, yeah. He's got the life out of these guitars. Do you, do you want me to tell you about guitars and cheer real quick? You don't have to be quick, mate. Oh, right. <laughs> Take no, as so long as you I like. Got, so I got very interested in this idea of chi. Like, it, you know, it's in Taoism and so a thousand year old philosophy. But the, essentially, most people know like life force or energy and um, what, you know, what will push a, uh, what, why a, a flower will push its way towards sunlight and what's in you when you're, when you're exercising and what's in when you're running now, when you feel good, etc. But I wanted to, I went to see this old, uh, an acup acupuncturist in Los Angeles about probably about seven or eight years ago, not long ago. And um, he'd been recommending it to me by someone. So I knew this guy was on the level. He was really good. So I, I, I was interested in chi and I wanted to know whether, because I had this thing about some of my guitars have got a real vibe, you know. And um, when, um, you know, when you've been playing it on tour for a while, 
it has this, what you're talking about has this life in it and this energy in it. So he was quite amused by my questions, this guy. He was ready to do acupuncture. He wanted to hurry up and stick pins in me. But anyway, <laughs> he, he, he indulged me for a minute. Well, he said, I was asking him about chi and he said, well, what is it you're talking about? I said, well, what I know about do objects have chi in it? He said, well, all right, this is what chi is. He said, you know, when you, when you leave your house to go on holiday for two weeks and then when you come back in and you put your key in the door and you walk in the house and you know the house feels completely weird and yeah. different, well, that's because there's no chi in the house. Yeah. It takes you a good hour or so to put the chi back in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think we all know that feeling. Yeah. Another thing he mentioned was like, he said, have you ever walked in a room and you, t two people have been arguing, they try and pretend they've not been arguing, feel it. but you know that you can feel totally. it. He goes, that's chi. So he said, what is it you want to, you, what is it you're talking about? So I said, well, do you think my guitars have got chi in it? So, 100% absolutely yeah, more than most things because of what they've achieved exactly what they've achieved <laughs> I see what you did there <laughs> I didn't mean to <laughs> but um, but also this conversation has chi in it and it's wood and it's vibration you know you've got music being vibrations but I used to work and still do go in like, guitar shops and there, sometimes you see a guitar and you go oh wow that's that's a really nice one now. that's like oh it's pretty cool that's like Peter Books from R.E.M. and I go and pick it up I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, yeah. It's not like every single thing is fantastic. It's like a handshake, isn't it? Correct, yeah. You can, you can feel exactly, it. Yeah. Feel the energy of the, of so the got, other being. So sometimes I will get these songs out of it. And being, again, being working class back when I early days, well, first off, all these guitars, they weren't called vintage guitars back in the day. Old guitars. They were just called old guitars. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> now, if you, you know, now anything from like 2003 is vintage. I've got a vintage iPhone. Just add a note. Yeah. <laughs> to the price yeah. or a couple there you go I know. <laughs> so they were just old guitars and they weren't particularly fashionable but in the Smiths days because uh, we were just starting out I if I wanted to get one I had to tell myself well look you, you're going to have to write a single on it first it was write a song on it and then as the prices started to go up you know 800 quid for a guitar uh, I was like well you're going you're gonna to have to write the new hit single I on know. that. No, it's a good deal you made with yourself. It was a good deal, yeah, it worked yeah. out. No, it was a good deal, yeah, it was a good deal financially, but it's also creatively a great it worked. deal. Good challenge, wasn't it? It, it worked, yeah. 132 guitars and counting uh, you've owned. You've also been very generous with them, especially where Noel's concerned. And by the way, it's not it's not gone. You know, he's been extremely grateful for it. Yeah. I, I love the fact that the John Entwistle thing, you know, you bought a few guitars from John Entwistle and The Who. Uh, how was that? How is it How is it negotiating with a hero for the price of a guitar? Do you know, do you treat it like you would any other negotiation? Are you over generous because you don't want to insult one of your heroes? How does that work as a relationship? <laughs> well, John Entwistle, bless him, he was a very kind of, um, I don't know whether different, he was like, all right, uh, yeah, I got that one in uh, LA 1975. Uh, Give me a grand for it. Give me a grand for it. So, do you know what? He, <laughs> he was so generous. Yes. What I love about John Entwistle back then, he would go through a period where he would, um, hmm, how can I put this? He would do, he would like customise his car. He would like take like a Rolls Royce and he would turn it into a, a like an, an estate. Yeah. So he'd, he'd he was living like proper old school 70s rock star and then he would flog a, a few guitars to me yeah right this little oink on the way up v really giving me super cheap so i'd buy four or five off him yeah. which is why i could afford him because he was giving me super cheap i think he liked me and then what he would do he would go on on a tour with the who and then with all the money he'd make he'd buy he'd buy exactly the same ones again really yeah i thought it was great he's so cool i well, thought it was really good sadly. yeah so i ended up a couple of those uh, that Noel's now got, uh, that they were originally from the Who. Yeah. What I mean, what a what a passage of um, yeah, it's all good uh, lineage that is. So I could, can you tell I could talk to you about this all day? I'm really glad that you. As soon as I came in here, you were just oh mate, it's unbelievable. Buzzing about it. So yeah. much, so much. I want to ask you about. We don't have time. We're out yeah. of time. But a couple of things before you go. Did you? I thought I should have. I was going to ask you. The, I'll ask you the last question next and. What was going to be the penultimate question last? Um, you, you're asked every year about the Smith reforming, right? Does the price always go up? Some years is it less than last year? Some years <laughs> is it more than last year? How is that market? 
I, I think the last time we got made an offer, it was going up and up. Right. <laughs> the market. Uh, no, but you know what I mean? Because it, it's always like, because my question, original question was going to be, and how much you've been offered this year for this mystery <laughs> yeah, reform? Really. And yeah. I'm thinking, does, like it, crazy does it always money. go up? Probably does always go up. I th- the two bands that I think currently are being offered the most to reform are you and ABBA. And all bets are off on either of you ever doing yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> not, not going to happen. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it keeps going up. Keeps going up. It'd be it's weird if it, went, it? went down, yeah. It's got it. It's like dude. a game. How do we get him interest offering more money? It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Well, just keep trying. <laughs> okay, and uh, my last question for now, and I wish this I wish this conversation wasn't over because I've got so many more questions. The stories about these guitars, any guitar, the, the, the guitars that have Smith songs in them, but only Johnny has the key, the Noel Gallagher stuff, the the, the Rickenbackers being different from and the, the restringing of six string acoustic guitars with 12 string strings and what that does to a song and ah, oh, you yeah. know, a, a six string uh, uh, Fender that would, looks like a four string bass, but it isn't. Yeah, er, ergo, how soon is now, etc. 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 Yeah, but my last question for now is for now, Johnny to be continued is you are a guitar hero you are a guitar hero that is it that's what you are you're one of the greats in the world ever since the guitar was invented a how does that feel and please allow yourself to answer it and 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 b did you ever in your wildest dreams with that toy guitar at five before you were given your first real guitar at eight did you ever in your dreams Oh, well, it's a, what a lovely thing to think about now you put it like that, Chris. I definitely didn't in my ever wildest dreams. However, I had nothing else in my mind. That is the thing. Uh, I was so completely besotted with guitars on the TV, guitars in shops, other people with guitars. So uh, if ever someone was going to follow a kind of path, and we see this, we mentioned before, with, with people who are, dedicated to sports and stuff i was so single-minded but besotted i think and enchanted with what the guitar does and as i said when i get out of bed in the morning um you know i don't leap out of bed like wanting to, i do leap out of bed wanting to play at the moment again you know so it's been magical that side of it and um do you know um i grew up i guess being a teenager in the 70s uh guitar hero was was a a word and as I said that was the that was the, the, the sea I was swimming in the Pete Townsends and the um Jeff Bex and, and the Jeff Bex and yeah. the Keith Richards and all of that. And um to uh that was the that was the goal really and the guitar hero whenever I hear it I feel so um um what's the word? Oh mate there's no, nothing better. There's to, there's nothing better than being considered a guitar hero. I mean, all right, you'll know this. What you do, you do have to work at it. You you, you know, I feel like uh, you have you have to work. I, I focus on the things that I need to get better, at and then I, I genuinely do. So I don't sort of allow myself want to wander around patting myself on the back. But seeing as you ask, and you know, I'll be really honest with you, it's. Uh, the, you know, being a guitar hero is like, you know, that's the the best thing that ever could have happened to me in my life, I think. And the only yeah. person that could ever take that away from you is yourself. And Correct. there's no better situation to be in. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to you, but you've got to honour it, you know. Yeah. It's like anything in life, really. You can't really, uh, you can't really keep your foot off the, maybe it's a working class thing. You can't take your foot off the gas. No, well, if you do, uh, somebody will be there to take your place, that's for sure. And also, don't waste time looking over your shoulder because you might miss the brick wall that you're about to drive into. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, you know, I'm 60 now, and that's, uh, you know, those brick walls, walls have appeared uh, here and there. But uh, I think you just got on a... Because it's a nice feeling honouring something. Anyway, it makes you feel good. You can't go wrong. If you honour something, you can't go wrong. It can go wrong, but you can't go wrong. Yeah, and eventually, cor- it will go right. Anyhow. Cor- correct, yeah. What about Unmarred as a future <laughs> album title? What about Marvelous? I was writing all this stuff down last night. I was just so... Marcissism's a good one. <laughs> Marcissism's a great one! I'm a narcissist, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, have you ever met Andrew Marr? 
Johnny Ma, Ma on Ma. <laughs> That's going to happen. No, no, he, I bet he loves the Smiths. I don't know if I... We're, I'm way out. We're, uh, we're into Eddie Temple Morris' show. Eddie, I apologise, but it's Johnny Ma. Sorry, he Eddie. won't mind because he loves rock and roll. Always great to see you, Chris. It's great to see you, Always. Johnny. It's great. And good luck with the tour next year. And Thank everybody you, go and see him and get this book and get into your guitars or your tennis rackets or your, your golf clubs or your knitting needles. Find out what your jam is and get jamming. Yeah, be an expert. No one can take it away from you. Awesome. Awesome.